Okay guys, we're gonna do a follow-up video. Last week I did a video uh, why some preppers are just plain stupid. And the quick 20 second version is that I kind of said that we as preppers tend to hoard consumable items rather than buy things that help make us self-reliant and give us renewable resources such as things like seeds and foods that are renewable and and making us putting ourselves into a better situation we tend to buy consumable items that we hoard and i just think it's a really bad idea we should always be looking at self-reliance and in that video i mentioned toilet paper <coughs> and how i thought toilet paper was a bad prep and a couple of people kind of immediately said hey 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 you know Everybody needs to wipe your ass. Toilet paper is a really good prep. And let's start right out by saying, guys, if you have tons of money, tons of space, and you have great supplies of food, ammo, medical supplies, and other things, yes, why not devote a little money to toilet paper? But if you're a new prepper, if you're on a budget, or you have limited space, or whatever, toilet paper may not be the best prep for you. So you do have to take your, your situation into consideration. Me, personally, I don't keep a ton of toilet paper. Why? Because if shit hits the fan, I'm wiping my ass with this right here. Simple dollar store rag. I can bleach it every night and use it again the next day. I would rather take that money and spend it on ammo or taking my family to dinner rather than hoarding toilet paper. And, you know, I did say, you know, I kind of harshly said that buying, you know, and hoarding toilet paper was stupid. Here's my justification for this, and hopefully you understand kind of the harshness of the statement. But as a prepper, we need to really look at these things and what we buy and, you know, space, money, and resources are valuable for all of us. We're not, you know, not many of us are millionaires. Not many of us have infinite space in our homes. And... We have to pick and choose what will best help our survival. Now let's look at toilet paper. Okay? So in our imaginary situation here, say you are a prepper and you bought a one-year supply of toilet paper. You have a rather large family and you've budgeted out that you would need one roll per day for your family. And that's kind of that budget. So you're looking at 360 rolls, which would be pretty much, would fill up probably a large closet. It would take up probably a whole shelf on a big, uh, like one of those wire mesh shelves. It'd probably take up a whole shelf, maybe two. You're talking about a lot of space. You're also talking about a lot of money. You're probably talking the neighborhood of about $100 in toilet paper. So you've spent a lot of money. You've taken a lot of space. Eh, that's not stupid. You know, that's just, if you got it, why not? But what's stupid about it? It's the toilet paper itself. It's a completely non-renewable resource. In that, you pretty much take this stuff, you wipe your ass with it, and then you have to get rid of it. Now, if you're seriously hoarding toilet paper, beyond a short period of time, if your power is out for more than a month, your odds are you're going to lose any public facilities that you have. If you are, say, on municipal water and municipal sewer, those are eventually going to stop. The generators are going to run out and those will stop. And your toilet will stop flushing and you will have no way to get rid of this. If you are a person who has a septic system, the same thing is going to happen. You know, you are going to have to find a way to flush your toilet every time. And that might mean going and literally getting buckets of water to flush your toilet, which is getting rid of resources. So you're going to look, probably, in a, in a bad situation, shit hits the fan, the big one, you're going to look to get rid of that toilet paper the easiest way possible. And what is the easiest way possible? Of course, to burn it, you know. You could burn it in a wood stove, you could burn it outside in a barrel and use it to boil water. A million things you could do, you know, the burning it, it shouldn't really spread any germs around, you know, if you are burning it, the heat should kill any germs, and it seems pretty reasonable. But, what's going to happen? Say shit does hit the fan, and your neighbor looks over, and every day, day after day, they see smoke coming up out of your chimney, or they see smoke in your backyard. They're not going to sit there and say, oh, they're probably just burning toilet paper. 
they're going to say, lunch, we need to get over there and get us some of that. People who see your home are going to think that same thing. They're going to see smoke. They're not going to think TP. They're going to think food. They're going to think these people are boiling water. They have food. They have something I want. The burning of toilet paper on a daily basis is going to attract people. It's going to attract attention you don't want. Your other option, bury it. If you bury this toilet paper, it's probably one of the worst things you could do. Number one, you're creating a huge sanitary issue. When you poop, you know, your poop has things like E. coli and salmonella in them. And you are introducing that into the ground. So if you have a garden or you're growing or you have fruit trees or anything, you're potentially exposing the ground to all of these uh, bacteria that are in your body. And over the course of a year, that's a lot of bacteria. You can really contaminate the groundwater. You can contaminate crops. It's really not the greatest idea. I know it takes about 150 feet of uh, soil to remove those bacteria from water. So you're going to have to bury those at least 150 feet from any resource such as water or crops or anything like that, which means basically, you know, going quite a ways from your house and digging a big hole to bury that, which that's fine. But once again, guys, what does poop do? It attracts animals. Anyone who spent time in the woods knows animals are somehow just magically attracted to human crap. I think they smell our food in it and it's attractive to them because there's been so many times where I've gone, dug a latrine, done my business, buried it, come back, and the animals have dug it up. I think they smell our food and get into it. So do you really want to be attracting animals and environment to your property? You want to be attracting things like possums and rats and raccoons and things like that. Yes, you may want to. But at the same time, do you really want to eat an animal that's been getting into your dirty, nasty toilet paper pile. So you're also contaminating the wildlife that gets near you. So, you know, barring digging a very deep hole to get rid of your toilet paper, it's really a lot of resources to get rid of it. It's a lot of risk. You know, you're gonna be handling this stuff, which is going to be covered in bacteria. There's not gonna be medical care. You're gonna be exposed to things like salmonella and E. coli and here you are digging holes in the backyard, putting toilet paper in them on a daily basis. It's not multiple times per day because you probably don't want this stuff sitting in your house, stinking your house up all day. Nor do you want it sitting around your yard or in a bucket or whatever. So that's why I think toilet paper is kind of a stupid prep. Long term, shit hits the fan. You're really, you know, it's a burden to you. You know, you have to find a way to get rid of it. And I don't like the germs involved in it. I don't like all that. I would much rather prefer, if it were me and my family, a dirty old rag like this. You know, the kind that you keep in your kitchen for when somebody spills something nasty. You know, those dirty old ones that you just use for the nasty messes. And a bucket. And some bleach water. You can literally, anytime someone goes to the bathroom, go outside. Put this in your bleach water, clean it up, let it soak. The next person can come and bring it out and use it. No germs, it's sanitary, and you have a renewable resource. You're not worrying about how to get rid of it, you're not worrying about anything, and it would probably last you years, as long as you kept it sanitary and uh, took care of it. So, guys, when it comes down to shit hits the fan, I'm not buying this stuff. I would rather use this and buy $100 worth of food because $100 worth of rice will go a long way. $100 worth of bottled water would serve you better than toilet paper. So I kind of feel, in the end, it's not a good resource. Yes, it's comfortable and it's nice and I would definitely prefer to wipe my ass with toilet paper. But at this point in my life, you know, my money's limited, my space is limited. This isn't my top priority. I still need more food, I still need more ammo. <coughs> Excuse me, I just kind of burped and almost threw up a little bit. <laughs> oh, nasty. Must be able to talking about shit, guys. <laughs> um, where was I? Oh, yeah. 
I'm, I don't have infinite money. I don't have infinite space. And toilet paper is very low on my list of things that I would ever stockpile on. And I, you know, I think that risk of germs is, is what makes it a stupid thing. And and uh, these are the things as preppers we really need to think about and plan ahead for because shit hits the fan. The last thing we want to do is contaminate our house with germs and bacteria when we don't have some, you know access to good medical. So food for thought. Hope you enjoyed. And guys, you know, it's it's your own preps. You do what you want. Whatever you feel makes your family the safest. But I'm just trying to give you some tips along the way.